Hello everyone, my name is Bird Wadhams, Yoga Bird Sews, and I am here sewing live Simplicity 9745. This is a slip dress. It really is, I think, a pretty easy dress to sew. Um, the most difficult thing might be that there is a 12 inch invisible zipper that is along the back, which I forgot, just reminded myself, I forgot to pull out that invisible zipper. So I'll grab that in a few moments. But other than that, it should be pretty straightforward. It isn't lined. There are two um, pieces on the front and there are two pieces on the back. Um, I am actually going to be doing view A. So view A, it's really a mixture, a combination between view A and view B. So view A is kind of like, not really a mini skirt, but it's definitely above the knee. This one I think would hit you right about the knees. And then this is a maxi. And I am looking for a mix between the two of these. So I'm gonna be, I just lengthened, um, I cut A, but I lengthened the, the skirt of the dress by about two and a half inches, and I can always modify that, shorten it if I feel that I want to shorten it, but that's what we are working on. So let me go ahead and get um, all set up and tell you guys a little bit more about what I'm sewing with today and the different tools that you will need. One second. Um, Okay, there we go. I think we are good to go now, sorry about that. So today I am sewing on my, uh, my main, main machine that I love. This is a Foth Quilt Ambition 630. Um, it is a domestic machine and she is perfect. I've had it for a couple years and she is perfect. Um, I changed the needle so I'm all good to go. And you'll need some clips. You'll need some pins. I am using this really pretty, it's a white satiny kind of fabric. I went to a retreat. I'll tell you guys more about the retreat. But I went to a retreat and they had an all white event. And I have some all white dresses, but I didn't feel like, I didn't, they weren't speaking to me. So I'm making myself a slip dress because if there is another all white event and there are usually all white parties and stuff in the summer, your girl will be ready. And so that's why I'm doing an all white. Um, so the other things that you'll need in, in addition to your sewing pins and your sewing clips, I have little snips, use whichever, um, snips or scissors speak to you. I am going to be using this, um, turner to turn my, um, straps in and out. Um, you always need a seam ripper. I am hoping I don't need this seam ripper today, but it's always good to have it anyway. Um, I think that's it. Let me tell you about the pattern pieces. There are a total of, I didn't even count them this time, I usually do, but you have pattern piece one, which is the front, you cut two of those. You have pattern piece, where's number two? There it is, pattern piece two is the upper back, you cut two of those. Pattern piece three is the lower back, we've already cut two of those. Four are the straps. Five is the loop. Hi, thank you guys so much for joining. Six is the facing for the front and seven is the facing for the back. So the first step that we need to do, we start with pattern piece one and then also pattern piece two. So I'm gonna move the other pattern pieces slightly out of the way. I mean pattern piece one and pattern piece three. Okay, let me put those off to the side. So you want to make sure that as you're preparing to sew that you have transferred all of the notches and markings from the pattern um, paper to your actual garment and pattern pieces. I've already done that. And the first part of the instruction, we are going to sew the darts in the, um, the front. So I actually marked where my darts go. It's in blue. I know you can barely see that. I'm using blue. This is a heat erasable um, pen, so this is perfect. And then as soon as I press the darts, this will all disappear. So let's get started. So guys, okay, so when you're, you're sewing your darts, you want to fold the fabric 
um, right sides facing and you're just going to stitch along the dark line. Okay, and remember you want to back stitch when you get started. Taking out the pins as I go along. Coming all the way to that end. When you get to the end, you want to manually lift your presser foot and you want to keep the, the tails of your thread long. Now I need to adjust you guys so you can actually see what's happening here at the machine. Okay, so you want to um, keep those threads long, which I have done, and you're just gonna simply tie a knot. So I do it twice. And then you just snip close to that end. And so we have one dart sewn. I'm gonna take that to my pressing station in just one moment. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to pin right sides facing the other dart. And as you are working on your darts now, certainly you can draw that entire dart line. Because I'm comfortable with sewing darts, I don't need to do that. I can actually pin at the beginning and at the end of the dart and just pretty much make sure that my sewing machine is going straight down to that end and it works perfectly for me. I want you to do whatever works best for you based on where you are. Everyone has their own way of doing things and so do what works for you. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. So we remember we want we don't want to tie it off with the machine. I'm going to keep the thread tails long. And just as we did on the other side, I am going to manually tie that twice. Now, usually at this point, the instructions have us pressing the dart down. Let's take a look press the dart down. So I was right. So I'm going to go ahead and take it over to, um, oh, the other thing while I'm here that I'm going to go ahead and do is step two is with right sides together, you pin the front sections together at the center front seam, matching your notches and stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Folks that are joined, just joining me, my name is Bird and I am working on this yummy, yummy, yummy dress today. The fabric I got from Hobby Lobby. Actually, it's the first fabric that I've ever bought from Hobby Lobby. Um, I don't even consider Hobby Lobby as a general rule when I am looking for fabric. I don't know that I have any real reason why. I just haven't gotten Hobby Lobby in my mind when I think of fabric. It is what it is. I don't know why. It just is what it is. All right, so I'm bringing the center of the front of the dress together. You can use pins, you can use clips, whatever speaks to you, making sure that you're matching up the notches. And you're gonna do that all the way down the length of your dress. So today has already been a very, very full day. Um, it's been a full day. I had people in the house doing work in the house earlier today. Um, so I had to take care of that. Had some things to take care of with um, my hubby. Um, all good on that end now. Thank you, God. But some things there. And so, um, you know, it's been a full day. But, you know, blessings on blessings on blessings. I am so incredibly grateful and thankful you know, I'm just incredibly blessed. I feel weird not being able to at least sort of kind of see you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just stitch the front seam together all the way down. Oh, another very important piece about this particular dress. So this dress calls for a woven fabric 
And you, when you cut the pattern out, you actually cut the pattern out on a bias. So um, this is technically a bias dress. Um, I've never sewn a bias dress. I've been wanting to sew a bias dress. And when I picked up the pattern in Joann's to purchase it, I didn't even know it was a bias dress. So I'm happy that that's the case. And when you cut your fabric, a woven fabric on the bias, um, which is actually just kind of diagonal, I guess, to the salvage. Um, hopefully I said that correctly. Um, again, I'm a new sewist, so all of the technology and all of the words, sometimes I get them all confused, but at the end of the day, I know what I'm doing, or I know what I'm doing for someone who's only been sewing for three years. Um, but I love it. Um, so um, this is a bias dress, and the beauty of when you cut something on the bias, this dress even though it was cut with a woven, cutting on the bias is gonna give you a little bit of flexibility and stretch. So it's kind of like we just made our woven dress into a stretch dress. So I'll give you a, I'll give you an idea of what that means. So this is a woven, so a woven doesn't stretch at all, but because this was cut on the bias, you get that little stretch. So you get that little bit of a stretch. And do this all the way down to the bottom. I normally in advance like to serge all the edges and I already told you guys today has been a full day and I didn't get a chance to do that so I'm going to serge after um, the dress is basically constructed um, because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing that and focus more on just the sewing components of it today. So um, the front seam is constructed. I'm going to head over to my pressing station using my Oliso. And then I will be back over there with you. I like to press the seam first before actually opening it up and then pressing it flat. So I'm going to press it flat open. And that makes for a nice, clean seam. I truly am breaking my rule in the sense that I am not um, surging the edges. It doesn't even feel right to me that I'm not surging the edges to be, um, the, the raw edges to be honest with you. Um, but the fabric isn't really fraying too much, so it isn't too, too bad. Little bit of fraying, little bit of fraying. And I would go ahead and surge because it doesn't take but a minute, but I did not get a chance to change my serger threads. And the threads that I currently have in the machine are for the last garment that I sewed. And I have like red, I mean, sorry, green, blue, and black. And obviously green, blue, and black will not work um, with this white fabric. I like to use, um, I like to use um, matching thread. I took out the white, but I didn't get a chance to use it. So um, I'm still debating whether or not I want to just go ahead and serge that really quickly. Um, so while I'm, um, I am going to go ahead and change my serger threads because I just feel like it makes for a clean, a clean make. And so I want to make sure that I do it. It is a pet peeve. There are a couple ways that you can change your serger thread. I do have an air threader, um, which is pretty easy to use, but I'm actually just going to do the little knot technique here because I think that's going to be the easiest way for me to um, change out my serger threads. And I just simply knot it and then I trim close to the knot and I'll show you how I kind of pull it through. This is a trick that actually um, works for any serger and um, you know it's an easier way to do it especially if you don't have an air threader because threading a serger can be a complete um, nightmare and so this is one way to kind of do it um, so that it's a little bit easier to get through. I hope I didn't cut too close there. Looks like it's okay. Making sure I don't get anything hooked up. Grab another one of them. 
So maybe this is actually good that I'm doing this for folks that are out there maybe that have surgeries and they're like, ah, I will use any, you know, some people are like, look, only surgery thread I keep on my serger is black or white. And if the fabric doesn't match it, that's just too bad. They won't change. I'm not that girl. I am going to change my serger threads. So then after I did, I just did the first two and make sure that the needle is at the highest point. Let me open up my serger here. And this is the Bernina, by the way, L860. But I have a serger story for y'all too that I'm going to share with you. All right, let me pull through. So I'm gonna start by pulling through these first two, which are the loopers. So let me make sure I'm pulling those the correct one. I'm gonna start with one, gently pull it all the way through. So there, I already have the white in that particular one. I'm gonna grab the next one. These fat fingers of mine. And I'm going to pull this one all the way through as well. Cut off the extra thread. So that's two of two of the four threads already threaded. I'm gonna do something similar for the next two. Oops, I dropped my thread down there. Let me just grab a different one. Oh, I'll grab it. All right, so I'm gonna do the next two. So with this one, I will pull it through, but these actually go through the left and right needle. Because you know when you have a serger, there are two needles. Um, you'd always, you don't always have both needles engaged. It depends on which stitch you're choosing to use on your serger. I'm using one that it will really is one of the more secure of the stitches, so I need both needles. Um, I actually really like the way that that one looks anyway, but you can do a lot of different things. You can do rolled hems and other things um, with your serger and you um, will then sometimes only need one needle. Maybe you need the left or maybe you need the right and you just follow the instructions in your guide. So this one, I'm going to, it's the wrong one. I'm going to pull it through. Ah, did I lose you? There she is. I'm going to pull it through. But when it gets to the needle, obviously that knot is not going to go through the needle. So what I do is an old fashioned, I literally cut it at this point. I cut it at this point. So everyone does this a little bit differently. This is kind of um, my go-to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and thread that in there. I like to use my tweezers. I do have a feature on the Bernina that helps you to um, thread your, um, your needle. Do I use it a lot? Not often, so. It also helps if your thread, you have a nice clean cut on it, it will go into the needle a little bit more easily. I've actually never um, threaded my serger live on anything, and I have the serger literally turned on an angle, so that doesn't really help me either, but she's in there. Okay, now just have one more to do, guys. Hang tight, and then we're back to regular programming. This, what I'm taking time to do, I feel is a game changer with um, creating your clothes and garments at home because you know there's a there's a there's a fine line so to speak between homemade and handmade garments and i like to make handmade custom garments i don't want any of my garments to look homemade and serging your edges is absolutely one way to make sure that it's, it's um, a really nice professional looking garment. All right, so we have one more to pull through, which is the blue that we're replacing with all white. So if you have any questions about um, serging, I mean, um, threading your serger, this one's a little bit stuck somewhere. There we go. 
So if you have any questions about um, threading your serger, um, and if you're watching live, please feel free to drop your questions. If you're watching on replay, feel free to drop your questions in the comments. Um, I just pulled both of the threads out. Why did I do that, Bert? So I thought I was saving myself some time, and then I ended up literally pulling both threads out. So I'm gonna have to turn this around, and I'm actually going to do it completely because I don't want, I want it to be threaded properly. So I'm gonna start with this one. Go ahead and get that in. See how easy that was just to re-thread it? Clean cut on the end. The other thing that I do is when I'm changing um, my my serger um, colors um, between you know after a project, I also use that as an opportunity to just kind of um, brush out any dirt that may be on the inside of it, any extra lint, um, because those things will kind of accumulate in there um, and can actually eventually cause damage to um, your sewing machine, your serger. So I take the time and go ahead and, and clean those out between projects. Pretty much the same way that I take the time, honestly, to clean my space after projects. I will vacuum, um, I will put things back where they belong, um, especially if I've been sewing on live, because when I'm on live, man, I am throwing stuff every which way. The serger has been threaded. So the first thing that I wanna do before actually serging my actual garment is I'm going to reach for, let me get rid of these threads. I have a piece of scrap fabric. And I'm going to start by using it on the scrap fabric first. And it looks good. So we are in business and we're back to regular programming. I am going to surge this center seam for a nice clean finish. And I literally just sewed through, did I? I hope not. I think I sewed through the bodice of my dress. I really do, I think I did. I think I did guys. And if I did, that means that I am going to have to cut Another piece of fabric. So let's hope I did not, or that it's not too bad. I've actually never done that. I did sew through it, and I don't think that it is repairable. It is actually horrific. It is horrific. Let me see what I have in the way of fabric because I may just be out of luck. Um, today, fortunately, I do have a little bit of fabric left, but I am not entirely sure that it will be enough to do the trick. I'm over at my cutting table. If it doesn't do the trick, this will be a very short live today as I run to Hobby Lobby and buy another yard of fabric. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. Yep, so I do have enough to cut another layer of fabric. But before doing that, I would need to completely remove this. I would need to completely cut that down the center. So I'm just kind of giving some thought to what my next move may be, given my boo-boo. Given my boo-boo. I have never ever done this, guys. Never ever done this. 
got really, really handy bird with the surgery there and lost your mind. And y'all, I think the gods are on my side today because I think I have enough fabric to make it through. I think I have enough fabric to be able to cut out um, once again the front of this slip dress. All right, so if you have any issues with um, uh, movement, uh, please avert your eyes because what I'm going to do is take you over with me. Actually, I can just adjust you. I'm going to just adjust you so you can join my cutting party. I'm going to put up a couple of my pattern weights. And fortunately, there are so few markings on this that this is going to go really super fast. Okay, really super fast. And what I'm using to cut my um, fabric today, um, this is the Ofa uh, Rotary Cutter. It's one of my faves. I'm at the point that I need to change the blade so it's not cutting as perfect as I would like, but it's still cutting. All right, forgive my back. <laughs> forgive my backside. All right, guys. And just like that, just like that, we have a new um, bodice cut out. Let me grab my heat erasable pen. Where is the heat erasable pen? And let's see. You want to make sure that you're transferring again your markings to the wrong side of your garment. That's how I do it. So I'm going to do that right now. using my heat erasable pen. And then I'm gonna mark where the um, dart needs to be placed. And we are going to do the dart again. And where the dart ends, here. All right, those are the only markings that are needed. Those are the only markings that are needed. And this is now scrap fabric but i'm not going to throw this out because it's really kind of silky satiny and i'm going to use this fabric for um a bonnet yes your girl is going to use that for a bonnet so that is not going to be thrown away y'all know i like to repurpose things so that's what we're going to do all right making sure that these are right sides facing i'm actually going to Start with that center seam. Back stitching, turn you down so you can see what I'm doing. The machine is a little bit on the um, noisy side to set today, which I have no idea. Why? Hi there, how are you? So the chat is open, so if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free um, to drop it in the chat. It's always nice to know who's watching and who's joining me. Definitely appreciate you rocking with me. One thing that you are definitely going to get um, working with me and watching any of my lives is these are not what, you know, Holly edited, where if this was something that I had taped, you wouldn't have seen all of what I just went through. And it's, it's the reality of the life of a sewist. And it's all good. It's all part of the journey. All part of the journey. Making sure I keep my edges as close together as possible little slippery fabric. 
So you may have noticed that I didn't put any clips in this time. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I do, don't. It just depends on um, how I feel about the fabric at any given time. And okay, here's round two. Let's not make that mistake again. And the reason why the fabric, um, the serger cut the fabric, if you haven't worked with a serger, there's an actual knife inside the serger that not only are you having the um, four threads kind of um, sewn and en encasing the raw edge, but it gets rid of any extra. Um, and you can adjust how much is cut off. You can also, I can also disengage the knife. If there's something that I'm surging or doing a rolled hem where I don't need to cut anything. And on the Bernina, that is so easy to do to be able to disengage the knife. Okay, let's go back and do those darts very quickly. And then I will iron the darts down um, and then also press that back seam to make it nice and fat, flat. So remember with the darts, you want to pin, line it up with that dart, the, the point there. Let's go ahead and do this. way down and remember you want to keep your dart you want to keep your thread tails long and then manually double knot that and then cut close to that knot and it stays like that now what I've also seen um, some um, makers do is that with a dart like that I've actually seen some makers actually serge or cut the dart. Um, I don't do that. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. I like the fact that the fabric on the dart is clean. Um, it isn't like it's bulky or anything. So that's not a, um, that's not something that I actually do. But I've definitely seen people do it. And I've also seen it in um, pattern instructions more so for independent pattern instructions than your commercial um, big five patterns. Did my needle just come and lose it dead? Come on. Speaking of patterns, I usually get my big five patterns from um, Joann's, you know, full disclosure when they're having the $1.99 sale for Simplicity Butter Rig. Vogue is usually like, I want to say $5.99 or $4.99. I don't usually buy a lot of Vogue patterns because um, I think my personal preference, my personal thinking about Vogue is um, I think sometimes the pattern instructions are more difficult than they really need to be. So I'm not a huge Vogue fan. Have I sewn Vogue patterns? Um, absolutely. I recently so, um, sewed up the Vogue 2000, which is the DVF, Diane Vaughn um, Furstenberg's dress. And that pattern was really super easy to, um, to follow. And the dress comes together really, really great and, really, and, and nicely. Um, so did I get the end? Let me double check. I'm going to go over that a little bit because I had to re-thread. So I want to make sure that I got that. That one came together really good. Kind of like reaffirmed or, you know, kind of made me revisit my thinking as it relates to Vogue patterns. Getting rid of some of the extra threads. I'm going to go over to my pressing station. I'm going to press the darts down and I'm going to press that, that center seam for a nice crisp seam. good do that on the other side 
and I'm out of the view of the camera just momentarily over at my pressing station. If you are joining me, thank you guys so much for joining. Appreciate you guys being here. Sewing a, a bias slip dress. Okay. All right. We are back to regular programming after that little um, detour with the little mistake that I made. Um, but, you know, I love that you guys get to see it and see the reality of what it is like when you're creating um, your garments and that stuff happens. All right, so we've already done um, step one and two, which is the dart and the center seam of the front. Um, step number three, it has us working on the straps. So let me put the front bodice off to the side. The straps, I've already transferred the markings from the pattern over to the strap, to the actual fabric. And the instructions here for us is that I've already pressed under three eighths of a seam allowance on the end of the strap that doesn't have any of the markings. They then have you turning the straps inside out. Oh, you wanna keep, they want you to keep this up inside out and you're going to stitch now just a three eighths of a seam allowance so pretty scant seam allowance i am not going to surge the ends of this uh, because i think it will add more bulk than i care to have in this tiny little strap area. So the shoulder straps that I'm sewing together right side spacing. sewing retreat um i don't remember now have i gone live since then i don't even remember if i've gone live since i came back from i did i did i did go live from the sewing retreat since then and i think i shared with you guys that um at the sewing retreat um i actually won a foff um quilt ambition um serger and let me just tell you guys how excited and surprised I was when I won that. Just incredibly um, surprised. So I'm using my loop turner here. This, this, this tool here is pretty handy. I'm going to tell you I have a love-hate relationship with it because sometimes the fabric slips off and then I have to start over. But knock on wood for me, guys, that... This is a long strap, so let's knock on wood that I can bring it all the way out without having to start over. Yes, see, I see it came a loose. I'm telling you, I have a love hate with this this um, strap, this turner. I do, and if you guys are watching and you know one that um, works better than this, let me know because this this puppy gets on my nerves. I'm trying to see if I can still hook it without having to start over. That's what I'm literally here working on. I'm trying to see if that's even possible. And it may not be. Sometimes the short way out doesn't work. And I'm so disappointed. Look at that, guys. Look at that. I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to clean get that cleaned up in there. What a mess. I tell you, this thing right here truly gets on my nerves. 
Sometimes it works like a charm, and then other times it is exactly what I'm dealing with right now. Where I'll get more than halfway through, and then um, this loop turner decides, baby, no, we not, we are, and, and there's a little hook in there, and it, it opens and closes, but never on the things that I wanted to open or close on. I was holding my breath. I was like, don't make me pull this thing all the way out. All right, so just I continue to turn it. There's the strap. So I'm gonna press that down, but before I go to the um, sewing machine to press that down, I am going to go ahead and do the second strap. Yep, love, hate relationship with this tool. Helpful. Because before, I think I would use a safety pin to do it, you know, um, but it gets on my nerves. It does. All right, let me do the other strap. Come on now. I may need to put a pin in this to at least hold it together until I get it going. So, like I was saying, guys, I won a Foth um, overlocker, and Foth is what I'm sewing with right now, and so to have the overlocker to complement this, you have no idea how excited I am. I cannot wait to get it, and I'm going to do a full, I think I'm going to do a live um, unboxing. I'm going to open it up, bring it in for the first time, and I'm going to unbox it completely with you guys um and set it up and you know maybe take it for a run so i'm super excited about that my machine is sounding kind of weirdish like the bobbin is rattling around a little bit how's everyone out there doing today Like I was sharing earlier today that today has already been a day. It's like, <laughs> it feels like nighttime already because it's been a day and a half. But things are, things are taken care of, so I'm happy about that. Um, started off rough, but I think it's going pretty well now. I'm going to be starting an a new upcycle project. Um, I have some denim jeans that I'm picking up from a neighbor um, later today, and I'll start the deconstruction process and then kind of decide what I want to work on. And um, I'm actually thinking about doing that live as well um, because I've had a lot of questions about upcycling where people have had questions about you know the process and everything, so I'd be happy to... Um, share that. Here we go again, guys, with this point turner. So the way the point turner works is you push it all the way through. And there are ways you can do this where you can sew a string in and do some other things. And I may need to go to um, other options at some point because like I said, this one really gets on my nerves. But if you guys can see, can you see, let me put my hand up. Can you see there's like a little latch hook? That little latch part um, and maybe I just have a, an inexpensive one and I maybe need to purchase one that is maybe a better quality one. But that little latch does not, if it's very temperamental. Um, so I'm really going to try to get that fabric. You saw that little pull? I'm going to try to get that fabric completely locked in. But you guys saw what happened. Ah, mail truck coming. Got that little flash. Takes a couple seconds to get it going in the beginning. All right, let me start again. And if you use this particular type of turner for um, 
you know, straps and things like that. If you have any tips, I really just think that what I have is not a particularly great one. And so we're rolling now, guys. Let's keep your fingers crossed for me, please, that we go all the way through. You see how we got caught on something else? So I'm going to try to move it gently because I feel like if I release it at all, We did it. First time through on this one. Um, but yes, Oof. that one really gives me a hard way to go. And this is a lot that I'm pulling through. So let me pull that up a little bit. Make sure that it's coming all the way through. There you go. And I'm glad that I took the time to um, thread my serger to add, put the white thread in today because you can see that with movement, this fabric is fraying. And so um, the, um, the serger really helps. I'm going to now move over momentarily to my pressing station and give the straps a little bit of a press, being careful to not um, press the area where I have the little... Um, markings from the pattern. So I'm gonna be careful on that end. These straps are pretty narrow too. A little bit surprised. I thought they would have been a little bit wider. And, um, you know, I may, after I construct the dress, if I decide that I want to make the straps thicker, I may go back in and make the straps a little bit thicker. Just cause your girl is full bodied, full busted, and no, these are not bra-friendly straps. Um, I plan, honestly, not to wear a bra. I know that's crazy. And I'll probably have to do something, but um, these are not bra-friendly straps. And it's actually kind of a low back anyway, so I'm not really sure that I would um, want to wear a bra. But that is maybe a modification that I will make later, um, you know, after I've constructed it. It's my first time making this pattern. And so I may actually go back, um, open up the seam if I decide and add a, um, you know, make the strap wider so that it is truly bra friendly. I'm also not really feeling the way that this fabric is pressing out. Okay. That'll get us through, at least for now. Okay. What did I do with the instructions? There they are. They're right in front of my face. Okay. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's how I feel about it as well is I see the, the, the sew alongs where they're fully edited and you know you just see everything go smoothly and I have a lot of respect and I like those too. I also like um, to be able to see kind of what you go through and how you fix things and how you work through it and, and it helps people to understand that um, this is all part of the journey and it's okay. It is absolutely okay. All right, so we've taken that. Um, they want me to slip stitch the pressed edges. I don't think I need to because it's going to be sewn inside the garment. And so on the outside of the front, so on the outside of the front, remember I, I transferred, let me turn you down so you can see this. So remember I transferred those markings. So this is the outside of the front um, bodice and I need to do a better iron job there. Let me get rid of this little piece of thread the serger thread and all right so this is where they want me to so it says on the outside you're going to pin the straps to the front having the raw edges even matching the small and large dots so it goes right there I do think I'm going to go back and make these straps um, larger That's a fairly easy fix. 
So I'm not stressed about that. Or I wear a bra that has um, like the um, clear straps. I'm not a fan of those, so I probably won't do that. Okay, let me pin that there. And then we're gonna baste. So I've placed the straps on the front where they need to be with the, the marking from the pattern piece and I'm gonna baste that in place. So when you baste, you want to extend the length of your stitch. Do the same thing on the other strap basting it to the bodice as well. And with straps and placement and stuff, that is such a personal thing. Um, it's, it's likely that I may go in and do some fiddling with this anyway, um, based on where I want straps to hit me. Because I did see on Instagram, um, a couple people make this dress. Not a lot of people have made it. Um, a couple people have made it. And I thought some of the straps were a little bit in a wonky place. So I may go and make those adjustments. All right, so the front, we're gonna put that off to the side. We're now, the pattern is now asking us to pick up pattern pieces two and three. And with right size together, we are going to um, pin upper back to upper edge of lower back, matching the notches, stitch and press the seam up. Pattern piece three. Pattern piece four, which is the upper back. All right, let's make a little bit of space here. Looking for the notches. Take one off, so this is right sides facing up, and then use one of right sides facing down of the um, top. Make sure that I have the right one, and then I haven't gotten this thing kind of turned upside down, so I'm gonna just double check. Okay, there's the notch. Here's the notch, okay. So transferring your markings really helps you to kind of piece together the different puzzle pieces when you are sewing. And that is really the beautiful thing. Um, and so matching up that single notch, which is what I've done. Because this is the top of the fabric, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna use some pins on this one making sure that the notches are indeed matched up. The fabric is a little bit, it's it's kind of silky satiny. Um, so a pin here and there actually doesn't hurt. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other one, right sides facing. Make sure to look at the notches. Okay. And then matching up the notches and go ahead and place a couple pins to hold the fabric together. going to Atlanta for a Frocktails event in, um, in May. And one of the next things that I need to do is kind of prep my, um, my gear, my gear, what I'm planning to wear. So I'm just taking a look at this to make sure that I have it pinned properly. Um, cause it's something feels, just want to make sure I have it pinned properly before I sew it. And that doesn't look that doesn't look proper to me. It looks like it's 
No, it does. It does. Okay. So this is the inside. And looking at all of the little notches in the corners to make sure I have everything lined up. Always like to do that little extra um, check along the way. So I need to start working on my frock tails is what I was really saying there. Go ahead and get started. I have a general idea. Um, I have fabric and um, the theme is hidden garden. So I think you could really do a lot with that. You could wear something with flowers. Atlanta is pretty hot come May. So um, having said that, I am, you know, I want to wear something that it's an indoor activity. So it's not like I have to worry about the fact that, you know, I'm going to be standing outside in sweltering heat. It's also an evening activity. Um, but I also want to be dressed appropriately for Atlanta's weather. It's my first time going to um, Atlanta's Frock Tail, and I'm super excited because I'm going to be meeting a number of other makers that I haven't met yet in person. So excited for that. Let's go ahead and get this one lined up. So at the, the uh, retreat that I went to, I was talking to some people and you know, I told folks, I said that, hey, Deborah, I'm looking at the comments over here. Yep, I could add uh, flowers to the dress. Um, so are you asking me, Deborah, about the fabric I'm using right now or the fabric that I'm planning to use for frock tails? So this fabric or frock tails fabric? Frock tails fabric, I actually have something here. Six yards of... Um, it's a, a floral lace, and I have an idea of what I want to do with it. I am going to be doing a... I just realized that I forgot, guys, to change the stitch back to a regu like regular stitch, so I'm going to have to go back over that. No worries. That's easy. But I still had it on base, on a base, and basting stitch, and my dress would have fallen apart on me, guys. one done so that's the way that the back will look I'm just taking a look at it hmm. I'm trying to follow the vision I'm trying to follow the vision on the dress I'm not sure that I follow yet the vision but we are going to proceed and trust the process oh this one right here Deborah um, hi, LaAngela. Hey, Lindsay. Good morning. Is it still morning? Afternoon, guys. Where are you, where are you from, Lindsay? It's afternoon here. Yeah, so the one that I'm using right now, I don't remember. I got this from um, Hobby Lobby, and I want to say it's like a, it's a satinish, some kind of satiny fabric. Um, but I don't remember um, the actual type of fabric. It's not usually the kind of fabric I go with, nor do I usually get fabric from Hobby Lobby. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys up momentarily as I make my way over to my pressing station. I should surge the edge very quickly. I'm gonna press it first. Yeah, I'm not a big Hobby Lobby fabric person. And I don't have any ill thoughts about Hobby Lobby. It's just never been my go-to place for um, fabric. Just never been. Um, all right. And did this say press the seam down or? It's pressed up. Okay. It's just never been my go-to for fabric. You know, I know that they run fabric sales that are like 40% off almost every other week. 
Um, so, you know, I think you can get fabric there inexpensively. You know, you're not going to be paying any more to get fabric from Hobby Lobby than you would from, you know, anywhere else. It's just not really my go-to spot. And this news about Joann's, I mean, you know, have to see now what that's going to mean for us all. Oh, you're in Jamaica. Oh, you guys are an hour behind us in Jamaica. Hey, Mon, how's the weather there? What do we say? Wagawan? Wagawan? I'm trying to remember some of the Jamaican terms. I love Jamaica, girl. All right, let me get to the next pattern instruction. We are now at step number eight. I kid you not, when I see them have an instruction that requires me to pull out needle and thread, I'm like, really? All right, so let me see if I need to do needle and thread. So we're now at pattern piece number five, which is this little tiny um, loop. What do they want me to do with it? Fold the loop in half with right sides together, stitch, leaving the ends open um, with a needle. Oh, they want me to uh, turn it inside out. So it's basically doing the exact same thing that I did with the straps. So that means I got to use that point turner, I mean that loop turner again. But fortunately, this is such a small little um, piece of fabric that needs to be turned out that we'll be okay. Here's the point turner. So this one's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I, I love um, Jamaica, uh, Lindsay. Where in Jamaica are you based? Like what main, um, I don't know if you call it township or whatever, but um, I visited Jamaica quite a few times. Probably, I kid you not, maybe like eight times. Um, I've actually been there to teach. Come on, see how that thing gets on my nerves. Um, I've been there to teach yoga and fitness classes as a, a guest pro where the um, resort will actually put me up. Oh, um, thank you so much for that. Blessings back to you, where the resort will actually put me up in exchange for me teaching classes and I get all of my meals and I get all of my um, drinks. Everything is included as well as my accommodation for myself as well as my, um, um, wh whomever is accompanying me. And it's always been my husband, of course. So... So I, it's, I've had some really great times in Jamaica. I've been to um, like a couple of the couples in Ocho Rios, Negril. I like couples. The one in Negril I really like, but they need to upgrade it. I don't know if they have. Um, and then I've been just to a many, many other ones. Montego Bay is quick and easy to get to because it's right there by the airport. Um, I've been to Ocho. I said that one. And it's one other area. Is it Runaway Bay? It's another area that is there that, I, that I've that i visited as well. All right, so that is the loop. And what the instructions have us do doing at this point is with the needle, we did that. On the outside, you're going to pin one loop to the upper edge of each back section at the small dot. Okay, wait one second. So you guys see that? This loop, the instruction says to cut one. However, um, the instruction here for Simplicity 9745, it says to pin one loop to upper edge of each back section. So this is a, this isn't the first time that I've done a sew along and came across a typo um, in the pattern. So let me just go ahead and get a piece of scrap fabric and using my pattern piece, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over to my cutting table real quick here, guys. A little bit out of view. And I'm just using that scrap fabric that I used. I'm going to go ahead and cut another loop. I don't even know who to, like, contact and say, 
hey, I, I sewed your pattern, you know, simplicity. And these are, this is an error, you know, but it isn't the first time that I've run into these kind of, it doesn't happen all the time, but I mean, this is like in one month, I think it's the second time that I've come across um, an error in the pattern where it tells you what you need or what you should be doing. And it's clearly not correct. But with simplicity patterns, um, they don't, they don't, I mean, they have a full staff, a full paid staff on their team. Um, but they don't have, you know, eyes like sewists like myself that are taking the pattern um, with clean, fresh eyes and trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, it's all based on, you know, the, their employees, you know, to, to review all of the documentation and the pattern pieces. So it, none of their patterns are actually tested before they hit the market. All right, so this point turner is trying to not cooperate. All right, we're good. Let me give that one a quick little press. Okay. All right. So the instruction now wants uh, wants me to um, only. We're gonna, I'm going to pin this to each of the back sections. So let me go back to my back se sections, and hopefully I transferred some markings because it doesn't look like I did, and I did not. So there was. There is. Let me grab my heat erasable pen. I missed this tiny little, I missed this tiny little marking. And do they want me to put that on the outside? On the outside. All right, so let me line up my pattern piece and do that little mark. Easy sneezy. I'm just lining it up and just the faintest little mark while I'm here. I'm just going to go ahead and with the raw edges, um, pin one loop. Oh, I forgot something. So I got to do something else. I got to fold the loop in half. So let me. Go ahead and change, mark this side first before I move on. Lining them up. And then transfer, put that marking here. So if you forget it, no big deal. You go back and you make the mark instead of guessing. Um, so I missed a step here. Uh, attach a strong thread to one end of the loop, draw the needle, I turn fold. I did that already, keep reading that for some reason. Now cut the, mm, guys, remember I said that Simplicity did this wrong? No, it was, it's user error. It is not Simplicity because I only needed one. They want me now to cut the loop in half so you're gonna fold each loop in half, having the raw edges even. Cut the loop in half crosswise as shown, then fold the loop in half, having raw edges even, and baste um, the edges together. So it's a very short loop. Let me go ahead and cut it. Having raw edges even, gonna cut that. And then what they have me do is, which doesn't look that way to me, but we're gonna do it is so that loop I cut it in half I'm just going to fold it in half and on the front of the garment yeah they want me to base this on the outside, I'm going to pin the loop to the upper edge. So they want me to base this together. I guess they don't want it to slip. And 
And this honestly is a step that I would have skipped the basting it together, but because the fabric is on the slippery side, I think the basting actually is a good idea in this particular case. Yeah, so the, the loop is actually, that's a good question. So the loop, I don't believe is a closure. The loop, I believe on, um, I wouldn't say that it's a closure, but it's really hard to see that. But on the back of the garment, the straps come down and they're tied back there. The closure is actually the zipper. So it's just a way to kind of pull your straps into the back of your garment and so the straps, instead of being attached, kind of pulled over the shoulder. Let me lift this up so you can see. So sometimes straps just go like this, straight over. So these are going to go over into the back and tied in the center using the loops. That's what um, will actually happen. So that's what we're doing. But good, good, good question. And I love, yes, I love, I love, um, Jamaica, which is why we continue to return. I think the people are so amazing. Girl, jerk chicken. Jerk chicken is my thing. Okay. So we want to, on the outside, pin one to the upper back section, having raw edges even. And I'm just going to go ahead and pin that down. and then base the um, loop down. Okay. But I love, love jerk chicken. And then, of course I haven't read these instructions, but I believe what will happen is when I close up the seam, that loop will, will be pressed up, will just immediately go up and the strings will go through it that way. Let me grab the other one and base the loop on the front of the other one. This is not my um, favorite kind of fabric to work with because um, it's so slippery, y'all. If you are new to sewing, I don't recommend this kind of fabric. I recommend a cotton. An Ankara fabric is the best to kind of um, cut your teeth on. It's a nice, thick it's a nice cotton, great quality cotton. All right, making sure that's lined up. And then stitch that one down. We're now already at the, um, the zipper is longer than the opening and will be adjusted after the zipper is installed. We're now at the point that we're about to put in the um, zipper. And we need a 12 inch invisible zipper. Let me grab one real quick. I'm thinking, I, I'm not sure if it'll be part of my frock tails um, um, attire, LaAngela. I haven't decided yet. Um, let me get a 12 inch in, a zipper, invisible zipper. guys I'm just going through my little zipper drawer fortunately I keep um, zippers on hand so that I'm ready to go um, at any point is this a favorite of my zipper that I'm pulling out absolutely not it's surprising I don't have many white zippers so I'm gonna pull over a couple and then decide which one I want to use Yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to use it for um, frock tails, but usually in the summer there are all white parties and I figured it'd be nice to have one of these dresses around for an all white party. All right, so they said a 12 inch zipper. Here's a 12 inch, but it is ivory. That won't work. So let me see how many inches this one is. That one's more like 11 inches. This one looks dirty 
but it isn't. I'm going with that one. I'm going with that one. And so the invisible zipper. Let me switch over to my zipper foot. This is not my favorite zipper foot. Let me see if I have the other one here. So I think this is more my invisible zipper foot. Um, I don't do a whole lot of invisible zippers for some reason. Open the zipper and press the tape. Looks like I've already pressed this one um, with right side. That back looking going all the way up doesn't even look straight to me, the way that it goes up. But I guess it is, just doesn't look as straight as I would like. Um, so on this side, which is the right side of the back of the zipper, this is the um, right side. I have it facing up. And let's, um, I usually do my own way, but I'm just trying to follow what the instructions have. So pin the right side of the zipper. So here's the zipper. This is the right side, and they want me to um, pin it face down. So I'm pinning face down and how far down from this little little cut, so. Have the coil along the seam line. Okay, so this will just be placed all the way down here because what will then happen is as the um, the garment is turned on the inside, the teeth would then face in the right direction. If you were with me when I installed a zipper for a pair of pants that I did, I like to use a two-sided basting tape. Um, it's not really a basting tape. It's, I guess that's what you actually call it. Yeah, it is a basting tape. And I like to um, place that down um, to hold my zipper in place. You can use pins, you can use clips. The basting tape is just kind of my go-to, but you use whatever works for you. And I use it as sparingly as possible because I want that to last as long as possible. I will certainly buy more if I need to. One of the other things that this instruction did not have us do, which um, I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, I am gonna go ahead and search this edge though. What I'm a little bit concerned about is I like to add a piece of um, interfacing to provide additional support behind a zipper. But I'm gonna search this edge real quick. Clean up that raw edge. Making sure I'm trying not to catch the tape. I'm going to catch it. I know I am. I know I am. Bird. All the way down. So I, and I'm gonna go ahead at this point. I kind of got the tape caught up in there. So let's see if I can even pull it out. I tell you sometimes um, fake nails are not your friend when you're trying to work on something like this.
It's taking my time to get that top of the uh, two-sided tape loose. Using, yeah, the paper is actually tearing instead of just coming completely off. The paper for the tape is what I'm murmuring about right here. Usually is a lot easier than this. It is so hard to get there with my nails today. And I want to be real careful with the snippers that I'm just getting the piece that I need to cut. And all right, so I got that piece and not the um, material because it is really, it is not forgiving at all. All right. Okay, so right side of the zipper, face down. And it's supposed to be lined up so that when you sew it, that it is right about the where the seam allowance is. So I'm just trying to be mindful of that. all the way down. I'm just gonna add a little pin in here. Okay, so I have the zipper tape down and let's see which direction do I wanna start working with and then I'll turn it around. I'd like to open up the zipper there and I'm going to manipulate the needle to see where it is hitting before I actually start sewing. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew it down. And I'm opening up that coil a little bit so I can get into that little ridge. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. I'm not quite in the edge right now because I'm just basically, this is a little wonky. Let me lift that up, place it back down. Okay. Not quite in the groove and that's okay. This is, I will go back through with another pass where I'm a lot closer. I actually recommend that you base your um, zipper on anyway. So you guys can see that um, one side of the zipper is in, how easily that kind of came together. Um, I'm gonna go back in and actually that looks pretty good, but I could get a little bit closer because invisible zippers are supposed to be invisible. So let me, actually I'm gonna start on the top part. Now this is where I do want to be careful that I am indeed catching that little, into that little groove of the invisible needle, I mean the invisible zipper, because if I catch any of the teeth, I will have to go in and unpick it, otherwise you won't be able to close your zipper. I'm gonna move my needle because I do think I've gotten closer than I prefer. So I'm gonna double check, guys. See, I can feel that it caught the coil. I don't know. All right, let's see where we are. Check 
check my needle. Okay, there we go. Yup, it caught the coil. I don't like that. All right. Anywhere that it catches the coil, um, you don't fret, you just go back, you pick that part out and you go back and make sure that you um, sew it back down. It happens sometimes, okay? I'm pretty sure I hit the coil and that I'll have to clean that up. Um, the truth comes when you try to zip it up. Oh, did you see that? Guys, I didn't hit it. I thought for sure I hit it. I did not. Well, yay. Okay, so there's one side of the zipper that's in. Um, then we're going to pin the remaining left side of the zipper down. All right, so... Um, remember, this is where I'm going to trim this up a little bit because it's off center. I'm going to trim that side really, trim that a little bit, make sure it's lined up. I'm going to hit it with an iron. Make sure it's nice and flat. Okay, so left side of the back of the dress is right sides up and this is where it gets to be a little bit crazy because um, this zipper needs to be sewn um, facing down so it, it will feel a little bit weird um, and I'm going to go ahead and use my tape again even though it gave me a oh 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 guys I got to surge that real quick let me surge that real quick I almost forgot. Make sure that that seam is faced up. to use a little bit of my double-sided tape again. Oh, thank you guys for all of the comments and the little emoticons. That double-sided tape that I'm using is actually from um, Wawak. They were kind enough to actually gift that to me. So I'm happy about that and I use it a lot. All right, let's see if I'll be able to peel this off with any, with better ease than earlier. Yes, okay, okay. Let's do the other side of it. There you go. That went much better than the, than the first side, right? All right, so I want to make sure that this is where um, details matter. So before placing that zipper down, um, I want to make sure that the raw edges are lined up here. I'm looking at the placement of this center line um, so that it's as even as possible. Um, sometimes if it's not easy, even, um, I absolutely will tear it apart. So I wanna take a moment though, to make sure that I have this lined up properly. And before I move on, 
to press it completely down. I just want to make sure when I turn it in, it works perfectly, and it does. Just stick that all the way down. Of course, that little line, the seam, I say the line, but I really mean the seam making sure that the fabric is laying flat. You noticed on the other side that if the fabric um, wasn't laying flat, I just took the zipper up and did what I needed to do um, to make it flat. Okay. You have no idea um, how incredibly, get rid of this extra piece of tape up there. You have no idea how incredibly rewarding it is um, to be able to install a zipper um, with, I'm gonna say, greater ease. Making sure these are lined up again at the top. So a couple extra things that I always do to make sure, and this is not lined up properly, I can see that now. So I am going to adjust the zipper and pull it up some. Um, but used to, you know, used to be quite challenging to put in a zipper. I mean, I would have serious heartburn and there is no way in the world. So that that's better. So I'm now going to make the adjustment along the way. There's no way in the world that I would have done this live. Um, but my message to you, my words to you is hang in there. Um, keep trying. I mean, even now, I struggle a little bit more with the tape than I am with anything else. <laughs> but don't give up. Do not give up. When I've, you know, I've shared before that when I first got into sewing, um, anything that had a zipper, I would totally avoid. That pattern would never be bought. That pattern would never be made. Um, and that's just not me anymore. I am going to make it. Um, you know, I'm grateful for pattern um, tests because it pushed me outside of my comfort zone. Do one last little final check to make sure that the top of the zipper is lined up. It still feels odd and a little bit off to me. At first I thought it was too low. Now I feel like it's too high. And the most important part is where it meets here at that seam. To me, that's the most important part. And it is too high. So I'm going to make the necessary adjustments until I feel comfortable with where it is hitting. Okay, much better. I said that the last time, right? I was like, much better. And then much better turned into, no, you need to adjust that bird. And I mean, you can see the way that my fingers are getting a little bit sticky with the tape. And um, I still like the use of the tape more so than the pens. Um, I found the tape to be a little bit more um, spot on than using pens or clips. Uh, but it's, it's just a personal preference. All right. I'm going to get started here. Gonna move the needle position to make sure that I can hit the groove. Gonna test by going down into the fabric first. I can, feels like I hit it. Let me double check. Okay. Cause this groove in theory, um, the, that, oops stuck there the zipper um, so I'll show you after I take it off but 
there is a groove underneath of the invisible zipper foot where these teeth should slide under. And so it's about really making sure that the placement is where it needs to be. If it is not, then you will end up hitting your zipper teeth. If it's where it needs to be, then you can get close to that groove. Okay, now let me try to get a little bit closer to the groove. You can get closer to the groove and you're good to go, but it's a little bit of a dance. I'm moving my needle position over again a little bit more. it's not in the groove like I said this is not my best um, press a foot for invisible zippers okay now let's clean up the threads take this over oops did I sew this in wrong y'all did I sew this in wrong I think I sewed the zipper in so this one is in wait a minute let me double check I do think I sewed this zipper on the one side in the wrong direction. How did I do that? What am I doing wrong here? I also like to, it's fine. I got it in. <laughs> I felt like it guys. So the invisible zipper is in. It's not as invisible as I like. I'm gonna go back in um, and take time, a little bit more time and bring the um, actual stitch way closer. I was being a little bit cautious here because I didn't want to go into the coils. It's close, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Because you really should not see, the zipper really should be invisible. Not quite invisible. Let me see if I can give it a little bit more. See how comfortable. So let me take this off so I can show you guys what I was referring to. So there, there should be a little groove. It's hard to see it where the zipper teeth would slide in and the needle would be off to either the very right or left side of that, depending upon where you are, um, you know, from what direction you are sewing. So let's try to give that another go. Moving the zipper, the needle over. Okay, I'm in the groove, I think. I have the needle over. We're gonna give this one more try before we move on. All right. I'm not sure why it's grabbing the fabric like that, but it is definitely in the groove here. And when it's in the groove, you can tell it's in the groove. Get rid of that extra piece of thread because it actually opens up that little channel. Without you even opening it, it does it. So that's really good. That time got us a lot closer to where I actually need it to be. Definitely want to get rid of any extra thread in your entire project, but definitely around your zipper. Don't want those getting caught up in the zipper. I'm going to do just one little test before I do the same thing on the other side. 
that is looking much better on that side. Now let me clean up this last side. Did I do this side already? No, okay. And if you have installed an invisible zipper, correctly. I mean, it really could be any color zipper and it, and it shouldn't show. Hence the invisible part. Yep. Hence the invisible part. Let's get rid of some of those extra pieces. Ooh, look at that all down in that. That's looking, can you see that? That's looking pretty good. So that's much better. Um, I'm not gonna let perfect get in the way of pretty darn good. I could probably go in there and get a centimeter closer. And, but I'm gonna let well enough be for today. All right, so the zipper is installed, so to speak. Um, do the remaining half, stitch along to the notch, back stitch, close zipper, and check that it is invisible from the outside. Pull the free end of the zipper tape away from the seam. Okay. So we're gonna pull these this zipper um, away from the seam. I'm gonna zip this up. I'm gonna pull it away from the seam. So up in that direction. What some people do is they actually um, open it up completely and then like pin it off to the side. I'm gonna um, just follow the instructions here, pin it, pull it out of the way. And I'm gonna pin the balance of the lower seam together. down okay so this part of the, I'm gonna keep this out of the way and we'll play a little bit of a dance because they want us to get pretty close in there to be able to continue down. And let's see how this works. It may not work. Keeping that um, zipper tape out of the way. At this particular point that uh, we are beyond the zipper tape, I'm gonna pull off the zipper foot and place a regular um, foot back on the machine. Drop the needle exactly where I was before. And then stitch. Close the remaining part of the seam. Celebrate your wins, guys. Celebrate your wins. All the way down. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Sorry if you already dropped off and I didn't catch up with the comments.
Okay. Putting my needle back where it needs to be. Okay. All right. So zipper then, that looks pretty good. Um, I do feel like I want to get back in here. I know I said, you know, leave well enough alone, but honestly, I just feel like that lower part there, <sighs> you may not see it, but, and it's hard to get down to that part of the zipper anyway. Um, and, but I just feel like it's, I'm going to leave it for now. I'll come back and clean it up later. Okay. So stitch to the left, stitch all the way down. If you prefer, open up the seam allowance at the end of the zipper and, and stitch the tape to the seam allowance. So what they mean by that is I would press the seam open. I'm going to go ahead and do that very quickly. And stitch the... Um, is the zipper teach down to the seam allowance so that keeps it from kind of you ever seen that little bunching up sometimes people have with the zipper so you don't have that kind of thing going on I'm gonna close the zipper get my back give it a little bit of a press here just pressing but you don't want to put too much heat on it because these zippers are not metal. They are plastic and they will, they will melt. Okay, now that I've done that, um, to hold the zipper tape down, I'm going to just stitch the zipper tape on each side to just the seam allowance, making sure that I am not touching the actual um, exterior of the garment. So just really tucking it down, do that on the other side as well. Okay. Well, folks that are just joining, um, again, I am sewing up Simplicity 9745. This is a slip dress. Um, it's cut on the bias. And this is um, view A, B, and C different lengths basically the same dress but different lengths and i am doing um view a but with um slightly longer skirt and i may shorten it later but i thought i'd start with slightly longer see how i feel about it okay all right zipper is in and i think that that is honestly the hardest part of this particular make i also forgot to serge the edges of my fabric here next to the zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a little bit of a surge. Making sure that I don't cut into any other part of the dress. We've already seen how that can end. And it ain't fun. Sometimes I go really fast with the serger and honestly that big mistake that I made is because sometimes I'm Speedy Gonzalez unnecessarily. Clean edges. I'm happy with that. Mm, got a lot of hair on me. With right sides together, we're going to pin the front to the back at side seam, matching your notches. Um, being uh, careful not to catch in the catch straps in stitching. I don't think we put. Yeah. Okay. Let me grab the front of the dress. I'm wearing all black <laughs> and my pants and shirt are covered with lint and thread. I always take the time to put my um, presser feet, feet away 
um, don't want to lose them. So right sides facing, I'm placing the, the front and the back of the dress together. Looking for my notches. There's a notch and there's a notch. So, so truly uh, sewing for me is a lot like puzzle making or puzzling, doing a puzzle. So pin the right sides together, front and back. If there are particular sew alongs that, or particular items that you would like to see me sew, um, please feel free to leave it in the comments or reach out to me directly. I've actually had um, a couple people reach out. Um, one lady wanted me to sew a, um, a jumpsuit, uh, but I just did a jumpsuit and um, I don't have a, um, I'm a very intentional sewist. And so if I don't have a real need for a particular garment, I'm generally not, I'm gonna not sew it because I prefer to make things that I really have um, a reason to wear. Um, so I probably won't get to the jumpsuit if you're watching or if you watch the replay, I'm so sorry. I just won't be able to get to that this season because of the other things that I have um, on my agenda to make. Um, I also had someone reach out to me um, who wants to do a very simple bonnet, you know, because I do my own bonnets and I line them with silk or satin because um, it's really good for your hair and for your face. And these are reversible bonnets if you care for that to be. I usually uh, don't, don't reverse mine. I have the silk or satin on the inside, but on the outside I have um, a funny, funky um, fabric of some sort. Oops, my fabric got caught. Okay, let's pull that out. Um, I used some funky fabric. So I am gonna do, a, a that may actually be, um, let the red come loose. Okay. All right, we're having a little bit of an issue here because there's a bubble of thread there and my machine is like, we're not going over that. We protest. So we're gonna go slower. I'm gonna, mm, that didn't work either. Let's start down a little bit further away from that. So I am going to do um, a sew along um, with a bonnet and I may actually do more than just a sew along. Um, I may actually show on camera me cutting out the fabric because there is a really easy way um, to um, cut out your bonnet. You know it's a diameter of, I don't remember exactly what off the top of my head and trying to, it's a, it's a big old circle and trying to cut out a circle can be a little bit tough to do. Um, and I figured out a way to do it where I basically cut fabric into fours and I'm able to, um, you know, I've already done the measuring to get the diameter that I'm looking for. Um, you can see that I made when I had to cut the front again, guys, how it's a little bit shorter than the back, but that's okay. I'll just make the dress shorter, but, um, so I want to, I may actually show myself, show um, cutting of the fabric for the bonnet so you get the whole deal, or at least just kind of giving you the whole tutorial. I don't do much sewing for um, other people. Um, bonnets from time to time, I will do a pop-up shop. Like I'll just do a bunch of bonnets. And then, um, so there's the back of the dress. Here's the front of the dress. You can see that I'd originally chose to make the dress a little bit longer, but because I had to recut the... Wait a minute. I recut the front. I didn't recut the back. So maybe I forgot to make the back longer. In any event, it's going to be what it is, guys. So she might be a short dress. That'll be okay. Oh, I need to clean up this little corner right here that was acting a little bit 
temperamental. So the bonnet will likely be my next sew along. Next thing to do is um, we're at finishing already. So there's the dress. Let me lift you guys up a little bit so you can see me. So here's the dress, the front, I mean, that's the back. This is the wrong side and the front of it and the straps. I'm gonna go ahead and serge the edges. Serge the side seams, I should say. And y'all know this fabric is slippery, so I have to be super careful. Other side surged up. Get rid of some of these extra little threads. I'm so excited for my fall. Oh, can't wait for it to arrive. Oops. What just happened? Something is now going on with my serger. I mentioned the word "fop," and the serger is like, we are no longer working. Everything is threaded. Let me double check. in each of the threads to make sure there's no issue there. there we go. All right. I'm certainly not going to use my actual garment to check it this time. It all looks good. It is definitely pretty dusty in there. Using my tweezers, I'm just gonna clean that little area out in there. It doesn't take much. All right, I'm gonna use my scrap fabric. And see what's going on with the serger. And if it doesn't work, we will skip the serging for now and continue with regular programming.
try it again make sure because i have some extra threads here i want to make sure that that they were threads from something else and not the serger we're in business i don't know what happened that time with it so weird all right let's go ahead and try this again Keep looking to make sure it's okay because this fabric is, look at it, it is so silky and it's just moving and moving. There she is. All right, so side seams are done. Let me take a little step back and give you a little bit of an idea of where we are with the dress. Because it's pretty much done, we just need to do the facings. So it's a little bit hard to see from where you are. Um, so if I went to an all white like event, this would be a great dress. Um, with the spaghetti straps, um, do the facing, you have the invisible zipper. So once I'm done, you know, there's, it's hard to envision, but this is a back that's out. Um, looks like it flows with you. I actually may take the skirt in because I think it's wider than I like. Um, so this is the way that the front of the dress will look. Um, I definitely need to reduce the length of the skirt in the back. Um, cause I thought I was going to make it a little bit longer, but then when I had the little snafu with, um, me screwing, screwing up the front garment with my serger, um, I didn't have enough fabric to make the front any longer. So I'm going to actually place this against my fabric very quickly, my pattern piece very quickly and trim the back. See how quickly it gets to be such a mess here. All right. That's the front. And I am trimming the, I'm trimming the back skirt. So let me find the back. Here's the back. As big as this table is, I tell you, I seem to run out of space pretty quickly. Line up all of the raw edges. And I could probably do this even without the pattern piece, um, but pattern piece um, will make it, maybe make it a little bit easier. Get it completely on the table. Actually, I may not use the pattern piece. I may just use a ruler if I can find my going to measure all the way around the diameter um so that is i'm going to use my like that take me around you have to adjust this as you do it because it is being cut in a circle making just small marks along the um, diameter to make sure that I'm staying completely even. All the way. Moving my tool as I go along. Not doing straight lines because this is a just isn't that thing, right? So it's cutting, you're doing it in, um, you know, a, it's a circle. So make sure the skirt is fully on the table. Line it all the way up down here. All right. 
and then I can cut that. Making sure I don't have anything under, making sure that my edges are completely in alignment. I'm just following those dots all the way around. And then of course I'll clean up the raw edges on my serger. All right, I'm not gonna get rid of the extra um, fabric because I want to be able um, to use it for a bonnet. So there you have that. And it makes sense, it makes a lot more sense. It is a slip dress. The white honestly isn't giving me happy vibes. <laughs> it's the fabric. It's not giving me happy vibes, but it's all good. Let's keep going. I'll check, make sure no one's trying to reach me. Okay, I'm good. All right, so the instructions at this point, we're at finishing. Um, instructions is apply interfacing to the facing. We already did that off camera before coming um, here. So it's pattern piece six and pattern piece seven. One, you cut two. So the back facing, you cut two of those because of that zipper. And the front facing is a single piece that's cut on the fold. Um, they want us to edge stitch the lower edges of the facing. Um, I'm going to skip that because mm, I could probably go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that edge stitching real quick. the same on the other two pieces. have a serger it's okay um, you can use pinking shears um, or you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine that's done okay and then we have six. Looking at the uh, markings on your fabric. So matching up the notches. I like to actually um, do my edge stitching of facing after I've actually already connected them. Um, it's just one clean line. It's first time doing this pattern, I did not read any of the instructions before coming online. All that I did was um, essentially cut out the pattern pieces. So this is all completely a complete a complete cold sew today. So we we we're, we're discovering discovering this all together. Okay, is, does that look like it? Nope. No bird, come on. You did that wrong. The material is so shiny, it gets to be a little bit like, which way is the right way? Making sure that right sides are facing.
you know, even though I picked white because I thought that I might wear this as an undergarment, not an undergarment, but a dress under something else that I'm planning to wear um, for an event. Um, I don't know. The white white isn't really speaking to me. It, I can already tell the way that it feels. It's going to be bigger than I want it to be. Um, so I am likely going to, um, you know, either choose a different fabric or I'll, I'll sew it again, maybe. Um you know, let's see how it works out. So I'm gonna consider this one my um, mock-up. It's gonna be my mock-up, so. All right, so making sure I have the pieces all aligned properly. At this particular point, it looks like I do. Um, I've already edge stitched the, edge of, the edges of the facing. With right sides together, we're gonna pin the facing. the upper edge of the dress so right sides facing and I do believe they're going to want us to turn the zipper te teeth out before I do this but it does not say so interesting that doesn't make sense to me as I mutter to myself all right so I can actually use clips for a change. And I'm just gonna, wait, 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 okay. Bird, here we go. This goes like that. There we go. I'm gonna put a pin here because I have the little um, hooks there. I also, I'm getting so far ahead of myself, guys. Why didn't you tell me that I didn't sew my facing together? I just literally pinned it. <laughs> I literally just pinned it. I hadn't even sewn it yet. Like, really? Crazy. Crazy lady. See that I didn't even sew that and I was ready to pin it onto my garment like really is that what we're doing okay and you notice how the seams match up nicely so that's great I'm gonna just finger press those seams open on the facing. Making sure that the straps are on the, are encased on the inside there. This is an area that I'm not gonna play around with the clipping, so I'm definitely making sure to clip. And frankly, in certain places I am pinning. Not to play around here. We're at now the front of the garment. Sorry, I want to make sure that the raw edges are completely lined up. So I just went back and kind of did a little bit of shifting to make sure that they are completely lined up. Um, I'm actually going to pin the strap down because it's weighing on the fabric in the place that it is. So I'm going to pin it down so we take that stress off of the raw edge. Yep, and that works perfectly. much better. Yep, there we go. I'm gonna do the same thing here, is just place a pin 
to hold that strap down so it will no longer kind of pull my um, fabric down. So put that pin in there, making sure that I'm getting into the corners. And so far, everything is lining up um, beautifully. As I get to this area, I want to um, make sure that the side seams are lined up at the facing. I'm going to press the facing side seams open. And then the, this um, side seam on the actual garment, I press toward the back. And then get down to the corner. I'm going to place another clip in here because this, this fabric is a slippery one. Oops, got some extra pieces of thread around the zipper. We don't need that. Go ahead and get rid of those extra little pieces. All the way down to the corner of the facing. I'm gonna put a pin there. And then one here as well. All right, so let's read the instructions before I move on. So we've already pinned um, the right sides together, the facing to the upper edge of the dress, um, stitch and trim the seam. We are so close, guys, so close. So I'm thinking do this one Looking at the instructions here, I'm going to actually stitch down a little bit here into the corner. Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna start here. So let me tell you what I'm doing because this is an important piece. So when you have an invisible zipper and you're putting in the facing, I don't wanna just skip through this, is uh, I'm opening it up. So the zipper normally would look like that. You wanna actually open it up. It feels weird, but you wanna open it up completely flat and then press the facing up against it and then pin it. You know, sometimes, you know, I've said this, closed construction doesn't always necessarily, it isn't necessarily intuitive, but I'm going to pin it for you first. Um, take the clip out so you can kind of see what happens with it pinned. So what happens is when you stitch down um, along the outside of the zipper, where the zipper tape is, once you do that and you turn it into the facing to the inside, then the zipper teeth will point out and the facing is neatly on the inside. So sometimes it doesn't even make sense when you're kind of going through it. Um, you have to do it a couple times, and again, this is one of those areas where I say, you know, really trust the process because it doesn't always necessarily make sense. Okay, let me move that pin out of my way. I'm going to start over here. And you don't need a, a zipper foot to do this because you're far enough away from the zipper um, that you're totally fine. I'm going to backstitch there. And the thing that's interesting here is, oh, well, let me clean that up. I'm gonna move that over because it really should be 5 8 seam allowance. So I'm gonna move that because when I get the go to the 5 8 seam allowance, the construction and the notches are such a way that that zipper tape at the very top will be encased. And I honestly normally pull that to the inside. It did not say do that, but I am gonna make sure that the zipper tape is pulled to the inside so you won't see it when I turn it out. Be careful as you're going over your zipper here, the zipper tape there. We're getting up to where the strap is located.
I don't normally have to lift it up, but I want to make sure that I am indeed sticking to my 5'8 seam allowance. I'm going to go over that area again because that's going to be a pressure point and then continue down 5 8 that's the back of the dress we're now coming up to the side seam Remember, I like to go over that, that um, little tab a little bit more because that's, that's going to be a pressure point. So I go over that just a little bit more with a little bit of a back stitch, which is what I've done. I'm going to turn the garments five eighths, keep making my way around. I'm going to get rid of that pin, pin on the inside. Okay. And you could serge this edge of the seam. Um, it's going to be in case when the facing is folded to um, the wrong side. So I'm not going to worry about that. Oops, there's a pin right there. Let me push her further in. Don't want my needle to hit that. Definitely not the head of the pin. Again, turning as I'm going across the straps, I want to make sure that I'm hitting it again. Whoops, that pin is in the way. Let me reach down and grab it out of there. I may have to lift it up and get in there. It's on the inside. Okay. Making sure that you are not catching your strap. You want to catch where that strap is attached, but you don't want to catch um, the rest of the strap in your seam. So I'm just making sure it isn't there. Coming now to the side seam on the other side. Piece of thread caught on my presser foot. That happens every now and then. Hey D, I'm so sorry guys. How are you? D, I'm so sorry. I'm just looking at the comments. I've been so focused on this. How's it going? You probably left a comment 15 minutes ago. And I've just been blah 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 about other stuff. Making sure you catch that little hook in there, guys. Turn, stay with your 5-8 seam allowance. Them all the way down. Remember, as you get close to that zipper, be mindful of it. It's plastic, so it's not like it's going to do any serious damage, but all right. And then turn it, and you're going to go down alongside the zipper just a little bit. Okay. All right. So, um, going back to the instructions stitch trim seams I before trimming any seam I like to go in and take a look at things let me take them out a little bit okay so I'm taking a look oops got some little thread hanging out there I like to take a little look and see how things look so it's looking pretty good so those will be um, the straps here um, on the garment that go into the back and so it looks pretty good um, they want you to trim the seams at this point definitely need to trim the seams I can get rid of these extra pins wherever you have corners I'm not going to do a lot of trimming here because I did not serge um, and this fabric does fray a little bit. I am going to go back later and serge. Let me grab my scissors. You definitely, though, want to trim 
your seams where you have that little edge. Um, if you don't trim where you have a little edge, you won't have that nice little corner that you're seeking. So this trimming is really necessary in the corners, wherever you have that little, wherever you have a little point, essentially. I think we have a couple more of those. And you wanna cut close when you have those corners. Um, but not through the stitch. So just being mindful of that. And then we're gonna do it over here on the facing where it meets the zipper. Okay. I try to be neat even here. I'm pushing stuff into the um, waste basket. All right, so they want us to understitch. I'm going to um, I'm not gonna understitch because after I finish constructing the garment with you guys today, um, because I know I have something else going on, um, I won't be able to do fitting on camera, which I like to do. Um, and if I need to make adjustments, understitching is just gonna be an additional pain to take out. So I'm not gonna understitch, but I'm gonna come back to that. Um, what you see me doing here is with my little um, point turner is I'm opening those pieces all up, those corners. Oops, I forgot a corner to cut. Let's get there. The little point um, turner helps you to create a very crisp corner. So actually it didn't, didn't need much of it here. It looks pretty good when I popped it out. So that little trimming worked. Let's see if there's over here on this facing and turn that one out. Good, good, good. Looking good. All right, so that's that. Um, the next piece in the construction of the garment, I'm gonna take this to the ironing board and give it a little bit of a press. But the next thing that they have us doing is, I'm gonna secure the facing over by the zipper for sure. Um, It looks like there's a top stitch on this dress. That's what I was I was pausing. I'm not sure that I want to do. It looks like they did a little bit of a they did some understitching, but it looks like they did some top stitching as well. Maybe just the understitching. Um, but like I said, I'm not gonna do that in case I need to go back in and make some adjustments. Um, so I'm not gonna do any of that. Um, they also recommend that you not hem your garment um, they want you to hang it overnight which i highly recommend you hang it overnight um, before you hem the garment let me lift you guys up i'm gonna go to the pressing station they want you to hem it i mean sorry hang the garment overnight because i don't know if you've ever heard this but garments can actually grow fabric certain types of fabric can grow and so um, you can hem it today, then hang it on a hanger, and tomorrow you come back and you're like, why does my, my hem look wonky like that? So, um, you know, it's, it's good to just let your garments hang before you hem them. And I honestly do that. I'm not going to say I do it for every garment, but I do it for a lot of garments, just to be on the safe side. We are done, guys. We are done. I'm just going to hit this quickly with a um, with the iron. Um, I thank you guys so much for rocking with me. Please, 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 if you haven't already, hit the um, subscribe button. I'd love it if you would share it with other people. Um, I am doing um, weekly content, sometimes more than um, sometimes a little bit more frequently than weekly because. I mean, let's be real. I'm in here creating almost every day of the week. 
I might take a couple days off where I don't do anything. Sometimes I'm just in here thinking about what I want to do and not actually sewing. Like yesterday, I didn't do any sewing at all. I was just kind of thinking about sewing. Um, so, um, you know, so I have some other content. So this is basically the dress. I'm trying to figure out how to show it to you with my, without me actually getting in it. And I don't know how I can do that without me getting in it. All right, let me see how these straps go back here. Because I'm going to have to take off everything I got on to be able to show you how this dress looks. And I'm going to have to get my husband to help me tie it in the back. Let me see what I can do. Because I do want you guys to get the full view of simplicity, whatever um, this particular um, dress is. I'm going to try to tie it myself, but I might have to get my husband to tie it for me. And I could probably just slip it over my head. I am so parched. I'm getting over a head cold. And I think I'm, you know, I'm just so dry. Okay. This is the slip dress. And if you can see that detail in the back. Um, I am not doing any final really finishing work on it. I'm definitely going to let it hang overnight. Um, I don't think it's going to grow, but I'm gonna let it hang overnight. Um, I'll come back and I'll do the understitching, but I don't want to do the understitching just in case I decide that I want to come in and take, um, anything off the front of the dress or the side of the dress. And so if I did any, um, understitching that would make it, um, a complete pain. So what I'm going to try to do just to wrap us up is to try it on because I want to give you guys a real pattern review, right? I want, we've done a full sew along and um, I think it's a very easy sew. It's a super easy sew. It took me about two and a half hours, but remember I, um, I totally threaded my serger because I hadn't threaded it in, in advance. Um, we had a couple little snafus, snafu, snafus, snafus, snafus. Um, I ended up surging through the front of the dress and had to cut the front panels again. So I did all of that and we still finished this whole dress in two and a half hours. So it's a really, really super easy sew. Even with the invisible zipper, it was a really easy sew. And you guys saw me work through that. So I think it's an easy sew. I recommend it from that particular perspective. Let me slip this on real quick. Um, and if I don't like it as to wear out as an all white. Um, I'm gonna make this, this dress again. I may use different fabric, but um, I'm gonna use this as like something to hang around the house and sleep in. Um, I do like the skirt detail. You can see that my zipper is not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Um, first time working through this, and you guys saw I had a little bit of issues with it. Um, I also may go with a zipper that is exposed for a different kind of look where you can actually see the metal. I'm gonna slip over to the other side of the room and try to try this on real quick. So hang tight. Thank you guys for rocking with me. Let's see how this really looks. All right, so this is the real deal when it comes to, um, hopefully you guys cannot see me over there. I'm literally just gonna pull my sports bra straps down get them out of the way, try to slip this on where I don't need hubby's help. Let's see how it's doing so far. All right, so I'm almost back, guys. Let me show you where I am with the dress. Um, I definitely will make some adjustments to it. Forgive the way that my bra looks and everything. Um, so I'm going to give you my um, rundown of the dress. Now, I didn't do any fitting on this dress. While we've been together on um, YouTube, I've done no fitting. And um, I usually do fitting. It was my first time through. I'm going to consider this to be what is called a muslin. S-M-U-S-L-I-N. Um, 
which is basically a mock-up. You use fabric, usually you use just a regular cotton fabric. And so this is how the dress looks. I already know that I'm gonna go back, unstitch this. I'm gonna bring this in because, actually I don't know that I'm gonna bring it in more than a tiny bit, so I'm just giving you my fitting tips. I like this, but what I'm gonna do is go back in and I'm going to make some adjustments here. You're not, you guys, Honestly, I think I have it up too high, but it's hard to adjust it when it's it's up too high. It's not supposed to be that high. So I just don't want this to fall off in the camera, right? Because that would be bad. The sports bra part doesn't bother me, but not my skitties. All right. So. Um, I would definitely make some adjustments where I would shorten um, the width, uh, reduce the width of the bodice. And um, I feel like the, the bust dart isn't exactly hitting me unless it really is supposed to be this low and I don't feel like it's supposed to be this low. Yeah, maybe it is. Okay, so it is supposed to be that low. I would come back in and adjust this so that the fitting up here is all good. I'm going to show you my back. I like that. I like the back, guys. I like that look in the back. And I almost really could wear a little, I don't want this thing to pop open, but I almost really could wear just a bandeau for some support. Um, and then let me back up so you can kind of see if I can get back far enough for the camera's view. Um, it's like I almost need a step ladder. So the dress right now hits me at about my knee. And of course with the hem, it's gonna hit me just above the knee, which is good. Um, I was concerned about the hips. And let me turn you down. I'm gonna give you more of my fitting tips without undressing here. So, whoops. Turn you down more than I want it. All right. I'm hoping this is helpful to people. So again, I would make some adjustments here. I've never made this before at all. And I do not like the pull here. So um, Spanx may work. Um, this is not usually my type or style of dress. So I'm not sure how I really feel about it. I do do love this part. So I'm going to think on it. Um, it's an easy make. Um, is it one that I think is perfect and fabulous for my body type? I'm not going to say I'm completely sold on it yet. I'm always going to be straight with you guys. I'm not completely sold on it yet. So I'm glad that I made it, but let's see how it flows. Um, I don't know. So I just don't, maybe because I don't like white. Maybe because I do not like white garments. Maybe that's my thing. But, um, so I'm, I'm still working it. If I decide that the dress doesn't work for me, what I would literally do is maybe make it into a top because I like this feature. I like the way that it comes together in, um, in the back. I have on a sports bra, so guys, you're not seeing anything there. Um... I like the way that that comes together in the back. Um, so I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, I'm not sure if I like the way this scene kind of comes down. I kind of almost wish that that scene was also in the front to bring some light to the front of the dress. Um, so anyway, guys, this has been, yeah, I ain't feeling it. But hey, it was fun. <laughs> this has been Simplicity 9745. And I will make the modification so that it, it fits me and fits me comfortably. And so I'm very happy with the fit. And I'll share some pictures with you after I've made some modifications to the fit. Um, so I don't know. I'm still kind of um, on the fence as to whether or not I like it for me. It's an easy sew. I do recommend the pattern. Um, but again, I think you will need to do some adjustment because this is kind of wonky, wonky. 
Um, so anywho, so that is that guys. So this has been our 9745 slip first attempt at a slip dress. Maybe I'll find another pattern with a slip dress and decide what I want to do with it. Um, so let me see if there were any comments before I let you guys go. Um, I appreciate you guys rocking with me. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will actually, even though I'm not a hundred percent happy with the way that this turned out, the sewing part came out fine. Um, and that's what it is. It is a sew along. And in most sew alongs, people don't even try it on their garments. So you don't have no, you have no idea how it fits or what modifications. I'm going to try to give you all of that, um, to give you an idea. And I do think it can be salvaged with, um, a little bit of work. Um, right now I'm not just, I'm not completely happy with it. I could actually pull the seam in, in the front. I'm not sure. I'll have to play with it. Thank you so much, Leangela. Thank you for rocking with me, everyone that's out there. I am going to let you guys go for now. Stay tuned. There will be sew alongs. Um, or or um, if I don't do a live sew along, there will be a pattern review every week. I promise every week. So please share. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for now. Bye-bye, guys.